This is the Blockade Pimple Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, is Jared Morgan. Pop. Happy New Year, everyone. <laughs> I don't have a popper, but that's the best I could do. <laughs> Welcome to 2024. So far, so good, right? Uh, so, my, my, I, uh, normally I'll go ahead and stay up for New Year's Eve because, mm. I mean, noise. Um, <laughs> right. But Do you get a lot of fireworks in your area? Like, do people send them off? Oh, yeah. 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 It, <laughs> right. That's the noise um, factor. <laughs> they like to set off what I call the concussion grenades. Um, <laughs> yeah, the big mortars. <laughs> well, it's not just the big... All it does is just one giant loud kaboom! And it pretty yeah, much right. sets off every car alarm in the neighborhood. So, yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the intention is usually just, okay, fine. I'll stay up and, you know, no worries. Except for the fact that I was working New Year's Day at 5.30 in the morning. Oh, New Year's Day. New Who Year's would Day. go to the park on New Year's Day? I guess probably everyone because it's quiet. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's quiet, but yes. Um, I mean, quite sure. We're open three sixty five, so. <laughs> so you can even go there on Christmas Day to escape the uh, relatives, and you can. Oh yeah. Go to the most wonderful oh, yeah. place on earth. I will <laughs> say I have worked on Christmas Day there, and it's a different vibe. It's kind of like Is working it? Thanksgiving. Um, it's. People are a little bit more mellow. Um, they're a little bit more thankful and understanding of the cast that is working on that day. Um, so it's like, thank you for your service. Sort kind of. Thing. of it's, it's a different vibe <laughs> indeed. And then the next day, it's back to full-blown chaos. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, right. Uh, yeah. So there's, there's only two days a week where, where, they, where they sort of like go, oh, yeah, we recognize that you're doing something here. Thank you for doing something. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank right. you for letting us get away from our, well, they're bringing their family, but getting away from the extended relatives. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. The so, ones you don't have a choice about hanging out with. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to do the, well, I'm going to do, and Jared's going to comment, annual tradition, Chris's list of movies from 2023. I'm not going to go through the entire list. Um, but I did mm. want to uh, just kind of real quick. I'll see which ones I've actually seen this year. Movies, yeah, so, not mi not many, if any, honestly. It's interestingly been enough, I saw uh, 10 movies in the theater, and eight of them wound up on my best list, which is wow. pretty good. I mean, like... That's pretty good. That's what I, that's what I call knowing myself. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, right. So the two that I did not see in the theater... Um, the menu, which menu. I thought was a, uh, it's Anya Taylor Joy and, a, uh, uh, is it Ray Fine? I think it's Ray Fine. Um, hmm. it's, I thought it was a satire on the rich and, right. uh, you know, them spending ungodly amounts of money so they could have the dinner. Um, right. Only to find out it's a horror movie. <laughs> and, a really oh. good one at that. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. I, and when I say horror, it's not your jump scare boo horror. It's it's that, that dreading, creeping feeling, sinking horror. feeling of, oh, crap, we're on an island. We're not getting off. <laughs> like um, the same sort of feeling you get with um, uh, that movie that was all about silence. Um, I haven't seen that one. Oh, oh, a quiet, the a quiet place, or there's yeah, one quiet that, place uh, as above, so below, or something like that that just came up that has like, no a quiet place. Okay, yeah, that was like a creeping sort of horror that like just got to suspense really as well. Yeah, but this this is like a completely different kind of horror. It's that horror of it's the horror of the situation. It's right. Um, you like I said, you go for what you think is going to be a really fine, lovely meal only to find out their diabolical intentions with the guest list. Um, oh, right. Okay. <laughs> and it's just kind of watching people get their comeuppance, um, but it's mostly set in just the restaurant, you know? So, right. uh, it's, I mean, it's not a chase movie. It's not, you know, slasher film. It's not that kind of horror. It's that. Would have been cheap to produce. <laughs> it's only in a couple of uh, places, well, a couple of sets. 
Yeah. Um, the other one that I didn't see in the theater, and there was no way to see it in the theater because it uh, was directly to Netflix, is Leave the World Behind, um, mm. which is uh, Julie Roberts is the star of it. But that's not why I watched it. I watched it because it's made, written and made by the guy that made Mr. Robot and Homecoming, oh, okay. Sam Esmail. And that guy, I love his camera framing mm. and how he tells a story and ramps up tension purely with visuals and, and how he moves the camera about. Uh, it just gives you an unsettled, sets you on the edge of your seat kind of thing, makes you pay attention. Um, it's really, really quite interesting. The other movies in no particular order, John Wick Chapter 4, just greatest hits of the first three. Um, nothing new, but does it need to be anything new? It's freaking awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, which stuck the landing for the trilogy. Uh, I really enjoyed Would it. Would agree. Yeah. Um, is it my favorite of the three? No, it actually is probably my third. It would go two, one, and three. But that's not a matter. Two, one, and three. Okay. Two, Interesting. one, and three, yeah. yeah. Um, two's the most fun. One, I love the getting the gang together. It's um, a setup, isn't it? Number it's one. It's setup, yeah. Yeah, um, it's necessary. Three was, again, it's a culmination of the characters, and, and the fact that it stuck the landing is all that I really cared about. Um, mm. So... Uh, so I mean, it wasn't all unicorns and rainbows, was mm, it? Like, oh god, it, no! It was no. Which you know, if you haven't seen it yet, we're not going to tell you why that is. But probably you will have seen it by now. But yeah, I would hope so. it's <laughs> it's a different tone to the usual Gog movies. Yes, um, Spider-Man Across the Spider Verse. It's freaking amazing animation. Smoked anything else animated wise that was out there, and told a pretty dang good story, even if it did end on a complete to be continued. Um, well, they're going to keep the Spider-Man franchise going so they can keep up the uh, license for it. Uh, yeah. Right? So, yeah. Uh, but if they're going to keep it up in this way, I'm all for it. It's, I, I it's mean, great I, storytelling. I really enjoyed the animation in the first one. And mm. the first one was presented in 3D. And so I was really surprised that this one didn't have a 3D offering. All it took was like the first five minutes of the movie for me to go, holy crap, there's a reason why they didn't do this in 3D. You couldn't. You would have <laughs> you, you would have vomited if you saw it in 3D. Like, there was so much motion in it. Well, the fact that they have one character that is entirely made of basically pasted pieces of paper that are animating, it wouldn't have looked right in, two, in 3D. It would have looked very uh, 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 a Viewmaster. So... Yes, it would. Yes, it would. Um, and then the the animation style in, is insane. It like there's mm -hmm. a different style for each character and each world that they're in, and where that character is from of the world is mind boggling nuts. Um, yeah, it really that's benchmark for animation right okay. now. Yeah, really. No. Yeah, um, and I purposely saw the new Ninja Turtles animated movie just because it. Kind oh, what would you think? It, it's serviceable. Um, I'm glad. That's what it, it says in the box. What's that? <laughs> It does what it says in the box, right? Yeah, I mean, I've <laughs> yeah. never been a I've never been a turtles freak by any stretch of the imagination. It's more like, oh, I'll watch it, whatever. Um, I definitely was when I was growing up. I used to dress up in costume. And yeah, all see, that I sort of stuff. I could not tell you. I can tell you the names. I couldn't tell mm. you which weapon. I couldn't tell you what color bandana they wear. <laughs> oh, okay, right. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, um, they're just there's four turtles. <laughs> they're interchangeable to me, but. And the, the animation was really cool and that it was very rough. Um, it wasn't trying to look finished. Uh, it had style, and that I enjoyed. But story-wise, again, compare it to <laughs> compare it to Spider-Man. It's just like, uh, no contest. just in second. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you're not in last place. You're not in third or fourth. You're just a distant second. Um, yeah. There's a lot of air between you and Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Next up, I picked Sisu, which I don't know if you've heard of that. I haven't heard of that, no. Okay, so Sisu is about a Finnish miner during World War II, at the end of World War II. And he is out there all on his lonesome, and the Nazis are basically, know they've lost the war, 
and so they are traveling back and pretty much just torching everything along the way because they're like, why not? Um, and they come across this guy. Little do they know, <laughs> he used to be an insane marksman for the Finnish army, and he goes on a basically John Wick-style one-man army wrecking ball just killing the ever-loving snot out of Nazis left and right. So if that's your kind of movie, <laughs> and why isn't it? Um, it's, it is a hard-hitting good time. Um, that sounds like a wild ride. <laughs> yeah, it, basically think, yeah. think John Wick mixed with Mad Max. Oh, wow. Okay, that's quite the combination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I'm saying. It's That sounds bonkers. pretty good. That Anybody I've good. recommended it to that saw it then comes back to me and just like, what? <laughs> I'm like, I know. <laughs> right, right. Uh, speaking of sticking to landings, uh, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Thank you for completely washing out of my mouth the taste of Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal, Crystal Skull. Skull. That movie yeah. can go and die a horde death and never be viewed again because I'll just watch this one instead. Not that I needed anything beyond mm. the third movie, but since you made it... <laughs> Sure, let's watch it. Let's right? watch it. And I and I honestly uh I had a good time watching it. I didn't feel like it was trying to set up the next version of the franchise. I didn't feel like it uh betrayed the character at all. It it, it works. That's it all. was it, it was works. another Indiana Jones romp yeah. to me as well. Like it's like, yep, this is absolutely within the canon of, of Indiana Jones for sure. Like, yep, yeah. believe it all. Um, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, which <laughs> they're apparently going to retitle the next movie and it won't be called Part 2, which is just dumb. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully you just take off the Part 1 then on Dead Reckoning if you're not going to say they're... I mean, they're making the Part 2. They're just not going to call it Part 2 because it didn't do well enough in the box office and they don't want then people going, well, I didn't see the first one, so I won't see the second one. Right, okay. Ingenious. But here's the thing. You should yeah. watch this movie. <laughs> right. Um, okay. It, okay, my favorite game uh, opening of any game is Uncharted 2 with the dangling train sequence of Drake climbing his way out of this train that is slowly falling off a cliff. Right. It's fantastic. When they made the actual Uncharted movie, they chose to go with the sequence of Drake flying out of an airplane that was in Uncharted 3, um, dangling off of a cargo chute. Which was a cool sequence in the game, but it wasn't... It wasn't the train. It wasn't the train. It was trying to be the train, but it couldn't be the train. Hmm. Um, so I was kind of a little bummed that that's what they put into the movie. Well, Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning does the train sequence and it's right freaking amazing um, oh right it's i literally afterwards it just went well uncharted now what are you gonna do because <laughs> yeah. you just you just got trumped by a completely different franchise doing your sequence to the point that the director of that game commented and was like Hey, imitation is the greatest or uh, sincerest form of flattery. <laughs> so even he recognized. Yeah, he got it. Yeah, yeah he got it. It's <laughs> and that's just one part of a really good movie. Um, right. Th this franchise is it's been firing on all cylinders since three. It's yeah, I love it. It's great. So this is this is the next one directly after three, is it? No, no, no we've got a no. This is no, we've got a couple seven. more, haven't we? Or seven. Yeah, I have to go back through the the um, filmography and just see where I might have dropped off. I rewatched the first three before watching this. Um, the first one is so completely different style than mm. what comes after. The second one is a John Woo movie, and unfortunately, John Woo's movies have not aged well. They're very nineties, mm. <laughs> like right, very nineties. Um, and then the third one was. Uh, kind of. Hey, let's get it back on the on the correct path because the the second one had next to no team up, um, and so it was right. hey, let's bring the gang back together and do 
Um, and it's a good starting point. And then just from there, it just keeps on going bonkers and bonkers and bonkers and, and getting more and more. Uh, it's become like that first one or the, the third one introduced the, hey, look at Tom do a crazy stunt. And then each movie after that has been up in the ante on the crazy stunts. But what's amazing is, is that the stunts are all working in service of the story. Yeah, they're not just there as a no. showpiece. No. MI3 was the one where he dove into the computer underwater, wasn't it? No, that was four. What, that was four. Okay, that's where I'm up to. I remember that one vividly, yeah. but I don't think I've seen... Oh, no, I've seen the one where he's hanging off the side of the plane that as well. Five. On, that was five. Okay, yeah. so maybe I'm up to like six or seven. So, yeah. yeah. But I'm foggy on the details of those stories. Like, I mean, I they do start have... blending together. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. Yeah, I know that there were two separate big pieces in each movie. Yeah. So I know there were two separate movies. I just didn't know which which order they were in. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, next one to talk about is uh, The Creator, which is gorgeous looking movie. It's a sci-fi movie um, filmed for an $80 million budget. And it, it is looks like what these $250 million budget movies are doing. Wow. Um, it also is going to challenge your geopolitical stance on <laughs> invading armies. Um, right, depending okay. Depending on what country you are from, I think this movie is going to hit you differently. But right. I think it's going to hit no matter what country you're watching from. Mm -hmm. That's the amazing part. It, it doesn't feel like, oh, well, this is just a story told from this perspective. It kind of covers multiple perspectives and really makes you think and, and challenges your thoughts. Um, it's, it's it's really good. It's on uh, Disney Plus right now. It recently came on. Uh, give it a watch. Crank the sound mm. system. Um, it's, yeah, like I said, it's really a gorgeous movie. And then the uh, last movie that I saw for 2023 was Godzilla Minus One. And, or in the theater, I should say. And mm. I'm not a Godzilla fan. Like, I'll see... I've seen the MonsterVerse stuff. I have no desire to see any of the the Toho Studio Japanese movies. Um, right. Just because they You're all look cheap. You're not that much of a fan. No. Yeah, right. They just, I, I couldn't get into the man in suit wrecking a model. <laughs> um, this is Toho Studios. It's CG. Yep. It is freaking amazing. A ultra low budget, like apparently nineteen million for the budget. Um, but what for animate for CGI, that's nothing. Yeah, like yeah. what they get yeah. right um, is the humans. You really care about the humans. They tell their right. story amazing, so that when all the destruction is actually happening, you care. It's not just oh look at Godzilla smash. No, you're legitimately invested in the characters and what's happening and. Uh, that's the main triumph of this. Um, mm. That being said, okay. the monster stuff looks pretty awesome. And if you compare it to literally the trailer for the new MonsterVerse, which is Godzilla X Kong, watch the trailer for that, and that is just garbage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hot garbage. Uh, so well, There you go. Well, I will have to add that one to my list of things to watch as well because I was curious about it. But... Yeah. If it's if it's if it's more story driven, less oh look, this thing's getting smashed up and now that thing's getting smashed up, that might actually be worthwhile checking out. Yeah. And then if you're looking for movies to avoid, because it's always fun to talk about the worst, um, Black Adam, it's mm. god awful. Terrible, yep. terrible, terrible. Um The Banshees of Inna Sharon, which is a drama. I just don't get why the year was any appeal. It's a very unappealing story about a friendship that breaks and the one guy basically says if you come and talk to me or speak to me in any form or capacity I'm going to cut off a finger <laughs> okay wow and it just continues from there and you're like what is going on turns out it's an allegory for the war that happened in the civil war that happened in Ireland hey great um, okay. Evil Dead Rise blows absolutely <laughs> every wrong choice a character could make, they make. That's not fun right. to watch. 
I don't. I no. know that that's a trope in horror that that somebody has to make a wrong choice. But literally, when you've seen a character have their neck snapped, they're still alive. You kick them outside of your apartment. You close the door. You think you're safe. And ten minutes later, there's a knock on the door. You look through the peephole. There's the character talking to their child through the people going, please, mommy was just slightly mad. Can you please open the door? And the child does. <laughs> You're like, who makes these dumb decisions? Come on. Uh, why is my mother just reanimated and is talking to me again? And it's not uh, like she's got fresh peach rosy skin either. It's literally like you know, black tendrils going down the face and blood in the eyes and... <laughs> yeah. Any kid will be going, nope, 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 nope. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but this one goes, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, fast Un X. That's just like unbelievable. Yeah. Like unbelievable horror, really, isn't it? It's yeah. just, yeah, it's way laughable. Um, fast X mm. or Fast 10, whatever you want to call it. It's the latest Fast and Furious franchise. Um, Same as the other nine? No. Somehow it wound up being the worst of the lot. Wow, like, that's quite makes, an achievement. It, I didn't think that was a possible to be worse than Too Fast, Too Furious. It is. Completely nonsensical. The action is completely just like, yeah, whatever. Um, they try and retcon themselves into Fast Five, which is the best of the series. And it was like, nope, don't touch that movie. Thank you very much. Um, you have characters that either are completely over-the-top acting or other characters who you are like practically can see them going, you're paying me for this, right? Yes. Okay. Here's the lines. Pay me. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> right. Um, yep. Yeah. I'll spit my check as soon as I deliver the line, basically. Yeah. Pretty much. Uh, and then Meg to the trench. I really enjoy the Meg. I think it's a fun, silly, but good, again, monster movie with a giant shark, right? Mm. And it, but it, it at least looked like they paid some attention to science and the pressures of the deep and what kind of submersibles would be able to go to that depth. This movie is like, well, that's no fun. We want our people walking on the bottom of the ocean with glass screens so we can see their face. Oh, okay. and then And then the logic just continues to cease throughout and it's not fun at all. It's like, Way to ruin. Not good. So, anyway, I just wanted to touch upon mm. those because we like to do that every year. But let's talk about another giant shark, Jared. Well, I before we do it, I oh. actually did see some that aren't on. Uh -oh. Your them was... Um, am I still there? You're still getting me? Yeah, I'm still getting you. I, oh, you, good. You okay, froze. sorry. I, I, will froze, I will froze up. <laughs> um, so... Uh, one of the movies that I... It wasn't released in 2023, but I saw it in 2023. Yeah, that's my was, rule. Uh, yeah. We're, we're, it's when you watch it. Exactly. It could be years old, but it's uh, when absolutely. I watched it. Yeah. So I watched a, a really, really wonderfully done uh, anime called Suzume. Uh, it's uh, a movie, obviously, set in Japan. It's about this... It sounds around this 17-year-old girl um he just runs into this guy on the street um but it turns out that without any spoilers obviously um there's some sort of power about this person and it turns out that he is like a a gatekeeper basically he's responsible for making sure natural disasters don't happen in japan um so the thing that really, it, my kids absolutely adored this movie as well. They gave it a, a solid five stars when they were watching it. It actually makes you think at the end of it, like, you know, a lot of stuff. We actually talked about it at length at the end of the movie, which, mm. you know, for kids doing that of, you know, Rather 11 going, and like 13. <laughs> yeah. No, it actually is really thought provoking. But the thing that really gets you is the way that they represent the natural disaster in the movie it's like a being and it's like nothing I've ever seen before. So if you haven't seen it, just do it because it's a really, really well-crafted movie and you get drawn into the characters, even though it's animated. 
Uh, really good. I uh, would solely recommend that. He released in 2023, but I saw it in 2024 just the other day. Uh, is the rom com anyone but you? Oh, okay. Now this this looks this looks a bit gross, and <laughs> um, it, it's like you know any other rom com, but it's it's got some uh, I guess new and upcoming stars in it. There's Sydney yeah. Sweeney's the the yeah, main uh, sort of yeah, that's right, Glenn Powell. They and they really do a good job in the movie. Honestly, I don't know why it's getting. Like you know, fifty two percent on Rotten rot Tomatoes. It's actually not that bad, <laughs> but there, there is one thing that, that will that everyone will tell you about when they see it. There's no, no, not even any surprise, and it's almost like a warning. It's like there is full frontal male nudity in this movie, hmm. <laughs> so just strap in for that. <laughs> so, but it's it's done. Like I just laughed my head off when I saw it. It's, it's funny because that's movie, the it's probably predictable. In the way that you know couples get you know it's yeah. like a unusual couple that get together but it's a fun it's look just switch your brain off and go and see it it's actually not that bad so yeah that's uh now uh, it was actually 26th of december it was a boxing day special this uh-huh. one it was released here in 26th of december so probably earlier over over in the us i'd say yeah it had a little bit of wider release before then but not i think maybe by like a week yeah so yeah it's it's inoffensive it's an inoffensive movie it isn't that bad so if you just want a bit of a you will laugh a lot in it it's quite a funny movie um and it's not forced forced humor it's actually like genuinely it catches you by surprise so it's good you know yeah apparently it's based on much to do about nothing um Uh, so yeah um anyway so what i was gonna say big sharks (laughs) big sharks Stern went ahead and uh, dropped the some imagery and video of their latest pinball machine, uh, which is Jaws. Mm. Um, and I, I'll let you guys search it on your own, take a look at it, see There's what it is. Plenty of coverage out there, right? Um, mm. What caught me most was I went. Well, there's a lot of things on that table that look like they did in the Zen version of Jaws. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, there definitely is a lot of stuff on that table that looks heavily... Uh, it's. I actually commented on the video, one of the, uh, the, the videos they released, the launch trailer. I said, hmm, it's really interesting to... I'd be really interested to see the engineering behind that disappearing drop target. Um, oscillating, disappearing drop target you put in the game because that's a Zen... That's a standard Zen game feature for about ten years now. Yeah, you know, and and this is where this is why I kind of want to bring it up. I find it interesting that some of the things yeah. that Zen has been doing for quite a while that we all just kind of wrote off as well, that's cool and all, but it wouldn't be able to happen in a real pinball machine. Yeah, we're starting to see some of these things appear um, in yeah. one form or another, and it's very interesting. And I can't help but wonder how many uh, of these newer designers, because this was Keith Ellen, who this is mm. only his, what, third machine? But he always pushes the boundary in what can be done in and, Pinball Keith. And that's Keith. just it. And I can't help but wonder if any of these designers are looking at some of the digital offerings that are out there and going, well, why couldn't we do? Because they're obviously they're looking for something new. they got to do something to shake up the landscape of what mm. is being done in Pinball for, you know, years and years and years so why not look to what digital is doing and going hmm we can see about that (laughs) honestly i look at i I look at the jaws table and i say if there was ever a um a table that was like a physical version of a zen table this is the one Hmm. like if you like there's even you know like the with the like they obviously can't do this yet where they have the disappearing play field with the uh, the radar thing on it that drops down and something else yes. pops up. That's quite an engineering feat yes. to do that. But they still got things that spin that you shoot the ball through and it curves around just like that that mechanism does in Zen. And you know you've got the you got the the boat, which from what I've read looks very similar to the boat from Sopranos pinball machine. Oh no. <laughs> but but, but it, 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 this is an allegation, but 
it, it, they, people are saying that it looks quite similar to that boat, which, hey, why not reuse a mold and color it differently? Sure. You may as well. It's a boat, you know. It doesn't need to look identical. And people are saying, well, it's not the main boat that was used to actually hunt Jaws, but it was like the second, the other boat that they went out on first. Um, and people oh, okay. you know, were being... The internet was correcting the internet on that. So, you know, as as the internet likes to do. But like there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on in there that one of the yeah. One of the one of the things I noticed was uh that again, normally we'd say, Oh, digital only. The uh right below where the arc of the rotating uh stand up or pop up uh, drop target. Excuse me. I gotta get my terms correct. Um, they also have LED lights underneath to give a glow, a red glow, um, on like a meter. Um, I don't know exactly how they achieve that. Um, I don't believe it's a projection, but maybe it is a projection uh, onto the play field. But again, it's that thing of you're doing something different. That isn't just an insert light. Um, so is there like a sh like a shimmering sort of a look on the play field? I didn't see that in the video. I'll have to look. Is yeah, it in the premium? Look, look is directly below. I mean, it's in that arc because it's like a meter, right? Yeah. And and it and there's a red glow that will change and alter on it. Um, and like I said, I, don't, I wonder if I they're don't... using that. I wonder if they're using similar technology that they did in um, Stranger Things, where they project like a little pico projector. That's onto the what I'm field. wondering. Because mm. um, that that was so effective in Stranger Things. But again, that's the very uh, kind of thing that would be no problem to pull off in digital. But pull because that's off essentially. Like... So maybe the Pico projector is the digital effects that we're seeing in Zen Studios tables. Right. Maybe that's the way they right. they compromise or implement that sort of thing, like painting painting the play field, yeah. like they did in Stranger Things, because that was. It works. The technology works, and it's kind of cool. Um, I'm also wondering, because they specifically said this covers all of the Jaws movies. And I'm like, did you really need to reference 3 and 4? Especially 4. Nobody yeah. nobody likes 4. Nobody watches 4. Um, and 3 was pretty terrible. It was unnecessary. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's be frank. It had 3D. That was, and not good 3D either. It, it, you know, it's like laughably bad 3d um mm -hmm. but it's like did you really you could have just gotten away with just doing the first two movies since roy scheider was in those two and called it yeah <laughs> that would have been just fine just yep. fine um, yeah <laughs> so anyway i thought that was kind of uh kind of funny um oh, i would I'm love gonna, to... to address this right now folks okay. okay there was not a problem with my microphone or the audio levels during our mel interview it was merely, I was having to talk in a much lower tone to keep my voice from projecting outside of the room because my wife does daycare and we were shooting that midweek. So, yeah. yeah Sorry. Yeah. It needed, <laughs> it needed, there needed to be a reduction in Chris's normally loud projected voice. Yes. Uh, so, it was a, yeah. I wasn't yeah, using it, my normal radio voice. I was using my ASMR voice. No. I don't know. I can't. ASMR. That. ASMR. I hate that stuff. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> drives me yes. bonkers. Um, let's get into the uh, this story now. So let me tell you about my new toy. <laughs> Got it in 2023, but we'll call it. Got in toy. It's officially received in 2023. But we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll it's not what you're thinking. For, the new toy for 2024. Um, the toy that I had zero. Like, it wasn't remotely on my radar as a possibility for me to get a new pinball machine. Um, just the only thing that I'd been focusing on is the At Games uh, 4K cabinet, which yeah. apparently we're getting at the end of January. Um, mm. I think that's what they've uh, alerted everybody to. So hopefully I'll have a nice gift on my porch at some point at the in a couple of weeks. Um but that was all that that was all I was thinking about. I'm thinking about uh, upgrading my video card on the computer that'll be connected to it for my OTG and upgrading my SSD card. And I've been wondering about doing 
VPX install and just, you know, all that. That's where my headspace was. And I wake up on a Saturday and I've got a text message from uh, a camera assistant acquaintance who I hadn't seen or heard from in years uh, who basically was like, hey, do you know anybody that would be interested in a pinball machine and being able to pick it up? Because <laughs> that's the big thing. It's like, I'm interested in pinball machine, but uh, pick up? <laughs> yeah. Right? And so I, I, I messaged back and I went, well, what's the location and what is it? Hmm. And so he tells me that it's... Uh, it's not far from where I'm at. I mean, it's in a central location in the LA area. Mm. Um, and tells me that it's this, uh, he said 1977, but it's actually 1976 Gottlieb Target Alpha. So immediately I'm going, oh, it's an EM. EM, yeah. Great. <laughs> and not only that, but it's a four player EM. <laughs> so well, see, I don't even know. Even greater. That wasn't even a factor. I didn't know. I know nothing about EMs other than the you fact went, that I've rarely okay, played it's an on. EM. Yeah, I, I've rarely yeah. played on one that was in good condition. They're usually just beat to hell, planking, yes. peeling paint. Um, it was one yeah. of those things. And immediately in my head, I'm like, "Well, I'm not interested." Yeah, this is going to be trash, <laughs> yeah. basically. Um, yeah. And so my first question was, "Does it work?" <laughs> and he goes. Yeah, it plays. It just needs new rubber. Which is what they all say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So he goes, well, let me send you video and pictures. I'm like, okay. So, uh, meanwhile, I'm sitting there thinking, who do I know that would be it, even remotely... That's got to pick up. Yeah, that would be even remotely interesting. And there's only one person that I know of uh, in that realm, and that's the, the guy, Mike, who we used to do the wizard amusement uh oh apps. yeah the plungers because he does em repair and lives in the la area and travels okay and does that so i was like well if there's anybody that would know anybody that would maybe be interested it'd be him it'd be mike yeah. so i also uh well so then i get the pictures and i look at the pictures and yeah it's playing and he has a picture of the coin door and the coin door is nice and shiny. Like chrome. And shiny. I'm like, yeah, uh, on the inside it's chrome. And on the outside it looked pretty good too. Oh. But I'm like, well, that's hmm. not what I expected. I was expecting a rusted Hulk that hmm. was, you know, I'm like, huh, okay. And I'm th the wheels are turning and I'm like, maybe I'm, I don't know. I can't afford a pinball machine right now. So I asked the inevitable next question. <laughs> When do you need it sold by? How much are you yeah. looking to get for it? And he tells me, well, it's because it, this was his childhood home that it was in. His mom had recently passed. He's cleaning out the house. Right. And tells me it needs to be gone by next weekend because the realtor is coming with his guys and a uh, Camera. trash bin and are just tossing anything that's left in the house. Oh, wow. Okay. So That's, now so they were in, just going to gut the place right. and just get it ready for sale. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. And now I'm in, ooh, pinball rescue mode. <laughs> we can't we can't have that happen. No, we can't let that happen. <laughs> no. And so he goes, well, that's part of why I was contacting you. I don't know what a fair price is for this. And again, I've not paid any attention to the EM market. Last time I even looked at EMs, it was like, Six hundred dollars would be for a stellar machine, you know. <laughs> there was yeah. like two fifty to four hundred. Um, yeah. Now that was a good six or seven years ago. Obviously, the market has shifted shifted quite a bit since then. Um, mm. But so he goes. I don't know. Uh, does one hundred and fifty sound fair? <laughs> Doesn't sound fair, but it sounds nice. <laughs> At which point I'm going. I go in my head. I'm like, for one hundred and fifty. I might take this as a project or take it off your hands and turn right around and flip it to somebody else that wants it as a project. I don't care what the state of it is. 150, that sounds like... I can I can either make money on it or I could have some fun with it. Right, because I saw, I saw him playing it, so I know it does actually function. And that was my big thing was, I don't know the first thing about EM repair. Not that I know really anything about <laughs> solid state repair either, but 
I felt like I would have a better grasp of at least that than EMs, because I've seen the interior of an EM and I was just like flummoxed. Um, so anyway, I'm like, tell you what, I'm going to bring a truck down tomorrow. I'll take a look at it. Um, would you be interested in a trade? Um, yeah. I'm not going to go into what I tr would be willing to trade here because technically we're not some instruments to, changed some, hands. Some, but it was like I I knew that there was something that would be of value and it would be worth more than $150 because I did look up on the pinball database uh, or the on pin side. And they were saying these 150 selling, bucks is a low ball. It's a low ball. For they sure. were saying these were For selling sure. between a thousand and thirteen hundred. Um, mm. But I knew that in that time frame, all anybody would do was low ball the guy. Yeah, that would absolutely just lowball this and poor guy trying to get because it. Because he's not a pinball person, he wouldn't have a leg to stand on. He wouldn't. No matter what argument they threw at him, he would have no. No comeback answer. for that. Yeah, no comeback. No. So negotiation would go. So I'm like, hey, if anybody's going to lowball him, it's going to be me. <laughs> yeah, because you know what's going on. Well, and at least he'll maybe feel better about it, right? So anyway, yeah. I go over there. I go to check this thing out. Yeah. And again, expecting the worst. Yeah. I walk into this room and I lay eyes on it. And right off the bat, I'm like, it's not a dusty mess. Interesting. And mm. then I start looking and he like immediately lets me take off the uh, the playfield glass. And That's I put, very good. And I put my hands on the, the playfield and it's smooth and not planked and there's no paint chipping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh okay and in my head i'm going because i like watching car shows and of people finding and restoring even though barn finds z yeah zero <laughs> ability to do anything but it's always that holy grail barn find yeah yeah i'm like oh my god this is a barn find this yeah. is in stellar shape this is this is low mileage from <laughs> this is right. like super low mileage yeah so why don't i share some pictures with you all <laughs> I think a picture paints a thousand words. Picture paints a thousand words. So, uh, and I'll do a little audio here for our friends that um, are just listening. Uh, Target Alpha, if you've ever played El Dorado in uh, Far Sight's the Pinball Arcade, you've played Target Alpha. <laughs> Target Alpha yep. is just a four player version of that. It's a reskin instead of Western theme, it's uh, space. Uh, via 1976, space. so, you know, antenna on the top of helmets kind of space. Um, mm -hmm. And the, uh, but it's the 10 drop targets at the top of the play field, five uh, on the side is a very asymmetrical layout. Um, Gottlieb liked it so much, they re used this layout four different times. Um, yep. And there's a reason, because it's a really fun game to shoot. Yeah, 7,800 of these were produced. A big um, run. Big run. For an EM. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this is like the Adams family of of EMs, just towards the end of the EM um, era, really. I think they said that, well, I was doing some research, this was possibly one of the last EMs that basically for another year, Gottlieb uh, doubled down on the EM experience and then quickly realized, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. This is not where we need to be going. This is not where we need to go because Bally went and ran with it. Uh, they started converting all of their EMs, like Bobby Orr and Six Million Dollar Man, into or Six Million or Evil Can Evil. I can't remember which. Evil Can Evil. Yeah. yeah. From EMs into Solid State. Uh, yeah. So uh, anyway, up on your screen there, there's the uh, there's the target alpha in my very messy garage. <laughs> It's, look at that look back at that glass. Back look at that thing. There ain't a pinhole in it. Now, over on the left side of the screen there up at the top, you can see that there's like a chunk missing. Um, uh, that <laughs> I'd Remind me never to show you the back of my back glasses. <laughs> <laughs> because let me tell you, that's very clean. <laughs> yes. It's very clean. Believe me, I have my firepower back glass and it is cracked and looks nothing like that yeah so this is like almost fresh uh, like a new one that you would buy for four hundred dollars right fresh right that is so unheard of and gottlieb back glasses of certain eras are known 
to peel mm. and and just all the paint gets off them really quickly um this looks flawless yeah there is no other way to describe it uh next pick here whoops that's not the pick i wanted there we go there's that coin door <sighs> now yeah i do believe also... the coin door has been rebuilt because on the right hand side it's got a plastic uh mechanism for receiving coins instead of the metal mechanism that's on the left hand side oh, like a coin mech yeah right okay so they probably just chucked a new coin mech in probably probably um yeah that's so clean jeez there's look at the, the interior with the tilt bob those are usually and the balls aren't even rusted no. normally those balls are absolutely pitted and normally you take them out because they're actually a maintenance nightmare right um but this looks new in box yeah it's yeah ah quit doing that i gotta refresh the uh there we go hold on there we go look at that. <laughs> that's the relays you, you can see the colors of the, the wires. colors of the wire that's what blew me away uh, i was just like there's not dust all over the place that's insane <laughs> Wow. Um, it, another little, just kind of a close-up of one of those Jones plugs. Um, yeah, just I know exactly what color wire is going where. Um, that, that transformer or something. That transformer looks very clean. Yeah. It's not even, there's no evidence of heat on the um, right, paper. Right now the paper's the burned. Because <laughs> you can, I'll tell you what, on mine, yeah, the paper is burned black yeah. you cannot really make out any of the the voltage labels on it you can if you look at the right angle yeah that is like that's wow the, uh, that's the scoring uh count mechanism whatever it is that's normally in all the ems i've seen and i literally just saw one the other day because i was over at some uh, ed from the pinball shack's place who has one that's normally like a gold yellow color mm -hmm. based on all the um the contact grease that's built up on it over the 50 or 60 years it's been in operation mm -hmm. this thing this thing has looks like it's hardly been used like that is so clean there's the entire bottom of the there. play field <laughs> or not the bottom <laughs> of the play field but the the interior of the cab yeah it's mint basically yeah uh um so have you had yeah, i was there's, gonna say what's the back there's box a back box like? that's a hideous picture it's really dark um i was taking these at night so let's just go on to the play field itself <laughs> um that looks like the original factory mylar is still in place on it yes which i will say that mylar is really annoying because boy does it alter the bolcher directory <laughs> yeah <laughs> like but it's necessary um the only piece of necessary. rubber that was bad bad you can see it right there next to on the left of the bullseye target um that was That's a it. hardened piece of rubber i took that piece of rubber out and replaced it with a rubber from the upper portion of the play field that the ball almost never will hit <laughs> in the so that i had something there in the meantime it could play um and i rotated all the rubber so that it wasn't the black side yeah um the play field itself does have ball swirl in it um, but it's smooth. So the ball swirl, if the factory mylar is still installed, will be on the mylar. No, the there's ball field. swirl all over the the play field, like in between right, the, okay. in between the flippers. Okay, because there's no mylar there in between the flippers. Oh, there's okay, right? No, um, and then the same thing with uh uh by all the drop targets, there's ball swirl there. Um, so you can see that there's a, it's there's a little dirt on the play field i tried using a mr clean magic eraser it didn't do anything yeah that stuff will be ingrained based yeah. on based on bitter experience but that's <laughs> once you step away from it a little bit it looks pretty you don't even vibrant. see it it's very vibrant all the colors haven't been uv affected no. so the and they they also haven't been affected by a common problem that ems and games of that era have where 
just the amount of plays has just changed the color mm-hmm. of the paint altogether to yeah. a different color. Uh, both my slingshots, the plastic is chipped at the corner. That's the only bad plastic. You can buy replacements, I'm pretty sure. You, well, you can buy target alpha. kit. <laughs> yeah. If, if yeah. need be. Um, yep. That is... Uh, I don't know what that is. I think that was just a Jones plug looking at it. And more of those. Because I was just kind of blown away by how clean they all were. Those aren't plugs. They're terminal strips. Uh, There's no plugs on there. Jones plugs are like these little pins that you can yeah, put in and Yeah, it's out. a whole bank of pins. They're just, okay. It's just it's a like ten pins per side, two rows, and it's just a solitary pin, and you just pull out the entire bank in one go. It's all on a piece of bakelite. Oh, so that whole piece just unplugs. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. So it's a solid terminal. Right. 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 Uh, that's again. That's the interconnect between the top and bottom play field. So that's right. you can you so you can take the head off basically. There she is yeah. lit up. <laughs> um, gotta love incandescent glow. Yep. Um, now things I've known since the head unit, the the frame has been repainted. Um, mm. How do I know this? Because there's a little bit of paint on the score reel <laughs> uh, for the zeros. Um, that's just on there, and then there should be a stenciled like that what's on the very front of the cabinet with that little yellow explosion um that should also be on the head unit Um, but it's just white it's just white which again i'm not going to restore this you don't need to can do it (laughs) well there's there's not really much to restore on it chris honestly like looking at that like even the drop the drop targets and everything look there's your top down perfect like they're not yellowed no no, the drop targets aren't there, and they're not beaten. No, Flipper all the stencil is good all the way across the board. Yep. Um, that was a video. There's a uh, another side cabinet art, typical overspray. Right. Yeah, that's yeah, it's normal. Um, that's what's part interesting of the is it's, it's not of... white. It's then they like took black paint and they flecked it. Yeah, they they do. They spatter it. Yeah. Um, it's really common on mine as well. They've got like a spatter effect on it. It's really hard to replicate, by the way. Mm, yeah, <laughs> they I must can, have a special right. sitting on their um air gun <laughs> to do it. Uh. So anyway, that's the that's the target alpha. Um, I have put in a few games. <laughs> it's since then I've realized it's not perfect. Absolutely not. Mm. Um, a lot of it has to do with time sitting and not being played because as I've played it when I first played it it was automatically playing two players every time Mm -hmm. Um, since I've played it it's almost like the dust got shaken off of whatever contact needed and now I can actually play a single game although sometimes it inexplicably makes you play player one and four but it doesn't it scores on player one and four's reels but as soon as you're done you only get three balls in total (laughs) so there's some hmm. still some dirt uh, causing some some interference. The score match was not moving at all. It was stuck on 90, and then at one point it got stuck on 80, and it was 80 every single time. I have since watched a video. There's a guy that did a full restoration on a nasty ass Target Alpha. Um, right. Uh, two years ago, he posted this video. He's doing it in chunks. So I'm starting to watch and learn that way because um, that's how I learn. And uh, mm-hmm. I didn't know what any of the parts were on the mech. I didn't know how to disassemble anything, pull out a score reel or whatever. Since then, it's like, oh, you push a tab and you just slide the thing out. Hey, isn't that nice? Um, and the, the elegance in design that got me put into their assemblies is just beautiful. Yeah. Like they are meant for operators. They know what bits will fail all the time. Yeah. And they make them so you can remove them so easily. Yeah. So I've located the score match system and <laughs> it it sits vertical like there's a there's it sits there's a a, a, a what do you call them? Bake like re- disc. A what? Well, it's like a, a relay. Like disc. It's, you know, it spins. There's one on top, yeah. one on bottom. The one on top is completely completely caked just right. caked and there is a thin groove that you can see around 
<laughs> I yeah. I manually operated the mech, and it's like sticky. It's a duh, duh. so I'm like, okay. it needs a good cleaning. It needs a good cleaning. Fortunately, yeah. again, watching this guy's videos, cleaning doesn't seem that terrible. Like you take off the no. gunk with isopropyl alcohol, and then you get some thousand grit paper, and you just do a light polish on the copper. You just burnish the the pins, right? And you're golden, yeah. golden, good to go. Yeah. And what I've noticed is some of the so the player three and four reels were also some of them were kind of sticky and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I keep on playing four player games. The more I play it, the less they're sticking. <laughs> it's like it's these things EMs. want to be played. <laughs> the the one rule is the worst thing you can do with an EM is leave it. You that you have to like... if you own if you own a fl- uh, uh, any EMs at mm-hmm. all you have to make sure you put at least a, ten games on them a week because they do not tolerate being left as you're finding out now like yeah I mean I've done they, zero cleaning and it's like fixing itself it's <laughs> it, yes it's self repairing that's what which they is, do which is wonderful for somebody that doesn't want to do repairs um, so. With the cleaning, I was, again, I, I, this is the same thing that happens to me every single time. It happened with me with Firepower. It happened to me with A-Ball Deluxe. I start reading, and you start reading people, and they're doing one of two things. They're either like, don't turn on the machine until you do this. Okay. And then Mm -hmm. you do it, or me, I turn on the machine anyway. Play a couple. Oh, play's fine. Turn it off. Okay, yeah. so I can only make it better. And then I do the thing that they say, don't do anything until you do this. I do it, and then it doesn't work as it was before. I'm like, yeah. thanks, guys. I'm I'm not listening to the internet anymore, is what you're saying. Right. <laughs> I'm um, just going to do my own thing with it. And so I, again, I you know, did what I do, and I start, well, what? let's learn about this, and let's see the... And there's people doing the, don't you dare do anything until... So I'm very much just was like, I don't know a thing about any of these switches, any other positions, what any of them do. I'm not going to touch anything. But now watching this mm-hmm. guy's video, I realized that, well, I need to place an order with Pinball Resource. Yes, you do. <laughs> um, the main thing I need to buy is one of these little Flexstone files to just yeah. do a quick burnish on every single one of those switches <laughs> so that their contacts are good. Um and then, and there's, God, how many do you think are in an EM, Jared? There's hundreds, 500. Probably 500, yeah. Like, uh, if you're talking about contact points, points and you're talking about relay contact points as well, Yeah. It, easily 500. Yeah. Um, and then uh, he was using this grease. And it's, I looked on it on PBR's site about it. And they were talking about how it was unobtainium for a while. They were hoarding. Yeah. It was like these little tubes that would be just put into a pinball cabinet. And people were like, what are these? And he was just like collecting them all, dumping it into a bucket, essentially. And finally yeah. ran out and then was annoyed that there was no good solution for- out there. And so went and commissioned a company to make... Uh, yeah, Steve Young from the uh, Pinball Resource, like... He's an absolute legend. Like, yeah. yeah, he is the reason why Gottlieb machines are running today. Right. And so yeah. he has made this stuff. He says, it works exactly like you knew it. It feels exactly like you knew it. It just smells a little different. Um, but I guess it's specifically for those metal on metal contact points uh, yep. for the relays. Um, Absolutely. They actually, after you've cleaned all the gunk off them, the, th- the reason, okay, so the reason why there is gunk on them is from the grease, right? Because the gre- the grease will harden over time. Yeah, but the grease is really important because it's it's an electrical lubricant, so right. it will help the wipers move over the the different rivets. Mm-hmm. But it lubricates them, but it also kind of cleans them as it's doing it. I did so notice some a- of my rivets had a little bit of a groove in them. Yep. Um, which I'm sure is normal for as many times as something has been spinning over them. Um, it will add, yeah, it will definitely be yeah. um, normal. You could probably just get a little bit of light sandpaper and just reduce that groove a little bit. Um, obviously, you know, 
very it's late. reductive <laughs> it's reductive so yes. just be careful with yeah. it but you can you could smooth them out yeah um, so i will be doing uh, a bit of cleaning um just to get it functioning in that manner and see how many of the problems solve themselves i don't think my play count counter works <laughs> it's been yeah the, there's a it's stuck on the same number <laughs> It's probably a reason why it's not working. And I'd say, so I've already told you this, but mm. at the moment, um, there is a really excellent video series that a YouTube channel called Technology Connections is doing. Um, this guy has uh, a Williams four player, um, I forget which one it is, um, but he's got an EM and he's going through it's he's up to part two and he's just realized he has to do a part three but he's going through the theory of operation of an em and showing you the schematics of of the em and actually explaining tracing back the schematic to the mechanism and it, it was fascinating it is absolutely fascinating because there is a there's about 10 or 12 different things that happen when you insert your coin into an em and they all happen in about a second. So that's the complexity of what's going on inside these things. And he explains it so eloquently and clearly that even if you don't own an EM and you like pinball, you'll actually learn something from this video. I, after watching part two and, and part one, I'm less afraid of EMs hmm. now. And I, I would go, okay, this is just logic paths. That's all it is. And once you learn how to trace them back and read the schematic, then it's actually not that difficult to diagnose the problem. Okay. Um, Cause it's either, it's either a contact issue or it's um, like, it's really just a contact issue. Well, that's and, what and it... that's what I'm quickly learning that I rather am enjoying about this machine is these things are built like freaking tanks. Yeah. Um, and you're not having to worry about, oh, is the capacitor dead? Is the ROM not working? Is, you know, you're not electrical chasing bugs. It's literally going to be, is the contact making contact or not? <laughs> yeah. And, and most importantly, should the contact be making contact? Right. Because right. <laughs> there is an important difference. Some are open, some are closed at certain yeah. points. And that's why you've got to have the schematic. Because, yeah. and uh, got to leave schematics are like, you know, the pinnacle. They know how to write a good schematic. So, um, I, I that's the one thing I do have. I don't have the manual, which I can order off PBR for like five bucks. Um, but which is have, worth it. But I do have the schematics. Um, other things that I'm look, I am by no means an EM person. If I've said it once, I've said it twice. I like multi ball, I like ramps. <laughs> um, <laughs> the three machines I own, only one of them does multi ball. And none of them have ramps now. <laughs> um, what I really am mm -hmm. en enjoying, though, with the with this EM, uh, the pure noise it makes. Oh, it makes amazing noises when it oh, operates. They're just wonderful noises, and it's just all just. <laughs> it's it, yeah. It's visceral. It's amazing to hear them. Um, it's really. You know, it's doing something. Yes. And in fact, those noises, as you get more comfortable with diagnosing faults the noises it makes are important because okay. it, you'll as you start playing it and after you get accustomed to the noises it makes when it stops making those noises it's almost like a musical soundtrack to the machine ah. and when it doesn't make a noise that you're expecting you go why didn't it make that noise then yeah. so it's it, really interesting there's a there's another podcast out there which i've mentioned on the show a number of times before um uh, by um, a guy called Nick Baldrick. It's called uh, What's That Sound? The EM and Bingo <laughs> Pinball Podcast. And he details, a, like, he will, I think he's had like 300 episodes, but they're like seven minutes each. And he will go through describing how to, like, understand EMs from start to finish. And I listened to the entire podcast from end to end, like, the all the episodes. And again, I learned a lot about the theory of operation of, of EMs and what does what. And it's uh, Nick has now gone on to work and develop his own games for P3. 
um, the P3 Pinball platform. He's got a, a number of games on that platform now that he's produced because um, he's actually quite technical. Um, and uh, I think the podcasts are still published and available. Um, so again, another really good one. If you're looking for a, a pinball podcast and you haven't come across this one yet, he explains things very clearly and it's uh, really fun to just listen to. Um, and you'll learn something. Yeah, I, I equate the noises to it being just a giant adding machine. That's all it is. It's, yeah, it's, just, a, it's just a computer, but, but I mean, it's instead a very, of using transistors. It's a very satisfying sound from my childhood. Um, from the early 80s, you were still hearing that in adding machines. You know, People still had those um, before mm. calculators were affordable. Um, so I like that. I also it's totally like, what it is. Yeah. I also like... Uh, there are things that have happened while playing that you go, wait, how did that happen? Because in digital pinball, the collision mech wouldn't allow it to happen. Um, mm. I had a, I've had the ball a number of times just jump right over the top of my flipper. Um, oh yeah, yep. I have had. I did a shot that was. I don't know how it was so perfect. I literally shot it back into the shooting lane. Even though it's got the little stopper to prevent the ball from doing that, it hit at just the perfect aim, went whoop, right into the shooter lane. I went, what? I just had it completely jump <laughs> the, the the bank of targets into the shooter lane. <laughs> I'm like, yep. okay. Um, the random, again, the Mylar, if that ball is rolling slow, oh, it's all hands on flippers because you don't know what direction the mylar is going to send it when it hits the, the edge of that mylar. Um, mm -hmm. I've also got, um, so a, I wouldn't, I probably most of the, the uh, inserts are a little bit cupped, which is yeah. very common on a Gottlieb. Um, oh, yeah. Of that era. It's just how those inserts were designed was not the greatest. Um, yeah. And the bulbs run hot. They're all incandescent. They melt the plastic. Right. It's easy. And yeah. uh, so I've had a couple of times where the ball just nestles in because it was a slow moving ball and it, went, Boop, and it just sits there. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. That's a, uh, that's a classic old school game problem. Yeah. That's, uh, um, that's part of the charm. again, ball's rolling smooth, very slowly, hits an insert and goes, Drum, just takes a right turn. Yep. <laughs> You're like, okay. Um, that's a J turn yeah. <laughs> over the uh, insert. Now, you know, my initial gut reaction is, oh, well, I'm going to have to replace those. No, no you're not. I'm not going to. I'm not going to. You don't because need to replace if those. I re if I take those out, then we're dealing with the paint on the play field. Yeah. And making sure that you're leveled and making sure that no glue got up on it. Um, I'm not going don't to. do it. I'm not going to dab some clear coat and smooth them. I'm just going to leave it as is. Because player's condition. It's player's, player's condition. condition. But it, here's here's really why I'm not going to touch it in that manner. I've got three machines now. Mm. It, really, two machines. <laughs> yeah. If I if I will ever get off my butt and I'm gonna hand I'm going to hand stencil or hand draw all the score numbers on firepower. Right. Because the decals didn't work for me. Right. I'm gonna wind up doing that and then clear coat it i'm just i'm dreading doing the clear coating again yeah it's not that hard <sighs> well, i've done it four using, times you were using rattle can i'm using the actual stuff. spray gun um doing it wrong man it's too hard <laughs> <laughs> just get a rattle can and do it, it works um, for me and uh and then the the polishing and buffing the the clear coat got to get rid of all your orange peel um yeah, i didn't do that either you didn't do that either huh? <laughs> oh no i'm gonna <laughs> Uh, Jared Jared has a much different approach. Jared is a let's just dive into the deep end and make it work. I mean, every single time I've seen you do anything, that's what I'm like. Damn, he's fearless. He just goes, <laughs> and makes it work. Get okay. in there and get it done. Yep. Um, Although I did, I must admit, on timeline, uh, I did spend a little bit of time doing a little bit of sanding between coats, just a little bit, because there yeah. were some rough bits on there. Yeah. And it does make a difference. Like it's worth taking a little bit of extra time just to do a sanding occasionally. But I'm not talking about sanding between coats. Like I put right. eight coats of clear on my play fields now because that's like about the right amount. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sanding between coats. I'm sanding maybe 
four coats, six coats, and then doing like one more layer on top just to yeah. like. Well, you don't. I don't believe you do sand between coats. I believe it's uh, it's just your final coat that is really the. the you got to really hone it on the final issue. coat. That's yeah. where you do on the polishing, the cut and buff. Because you want to actually build up the layers. Yes. Because you know if you're sanding after each fine coat, you'll probably sand off the coat anyhow. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. So my point is, is if I can get firepower up and running, I will have three tables. What are the odds that I could trade? A bulk of three for something modern or more modern. Um, you could sell them and then use that money to buy something new. There's that option too. Um, so I'll tell you a story, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I've got the, I've got my three got leaves, right? I've got mm -hmm. Pink Panther, Force 2, um, Star Race is back with me um, last year. Uh, and I got approached by one of the, uh, the, the pinhead, local pinheads here saying, oh, I'd really like to grab your pink panther for a bit and i'll loan you a game uh i'll loan you one of mine and i said oh yeah swap that'd be nice new lot new game in the lineup and he only loaned me fishtails oh that's why so, you're not working on it <laughs> yeah that's right so i i got it it basically came from another person's house so th this is a thing probably everywhere in pinball but a lot of pinball owners they will just loan games between a network of trusted people. Yeah, because they start and, they get they get bored of the game that they have and yeah. they want to try something else. Yeah. So I think I might actually be in that network now. Oh nice. And I know people love my three games. Like mm -hmm. they I've had a couple of offers to buy them. Like they say, if you think you're selling that, you come to me first because I want to buy it. Um because I put a lot of effort into them and yeah. a lot of money into them, and they are basically new in box games when when i've done them um for all intents um so like this guy was he's been loving loving pink pan he goes oh, he's been kicking my butt every single time and i love it um and so we're going to do the same thing again um he's got uh a, so i did i helped him out a lot I, I, I replaced the belt on the the um the uh the real assembly which is a bit of a pain in the butt to do but really really needs it um fix i redoubled all the pop bumpers and i just did a bit of tuning on the flippers and stuff like that it's working beautifully now I'm really playing well like very well so he said well you know i yeah i'd be i'd like to have another one of yours um for a bit as well so i'll i'll lend you corvette oh, okay um yeah a game that i have not spent a lot of time on at all yeah um, and it's reportedly a really fun game once you get into it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm really looking forward to having a go at that. Like, that's a modern DMD, yeah. like you know. So yeah, I'm, it's it's the start of like a new sort of lineup. I'm using these as like bargaining chips now. Because I figure, um, I figure, I posted on there's a, a, a EM repair Gottlieb EM repair group on Facebook. Um, mm. and everybody's been saying the same thing where they're just like, Oh my God, what a find, what a steal. Um, yeah. And a lot of people, I've already had one person ask, are you selling it? <laughs> and, yeah, like, uh... Um, and people just basically commenting about how they're like, Oh, I owned one of those, one of those, you know, a long time ago. I sold it. I really wish I never did. Um, mm. so I'm getting the impression that this is one of those EMs that, it's and sought it after. Stood, yeah, it stood the test of time and people like it. And again, it's because it's drop target city. Um, That's great. Because a lot of EMs, yeah. it's freaking zipper flippers and just pop bumpers everywhere. Where's the fun in that? Yep. Um, and, a, and a few stand-up targets here and there. Like, yeah. they're usually pretty boring in their layouts. Yeah. Um, and then I feel like 8-Ball Deluxe, mine's not in, like, the play field's not in great shape. There's cracks all over the place. Um, mm. If I was to do that overlay, that plastic overlay, uh, that you can buy, you've heard about. Oh yeah, it. just say about that. That's the machine I would do it on. Um, yeah, it's it's a popular game. But it, again, it's a popular game. Um, yeah, and so I, firepower I think is like eh, whatever. <laughs> mm. I don't think anybody's like ooh firepower. Um, I mean but, firepower with the drop target mod would be interesting, but you know. Yeah, but then it's, then it's sourcing the drop target mod and. It's, yeah, you got to source, source a couple of three banks, and that isn't easy. Yeah, it's a pain in the butt. Yeah. So, um, but point being, I'm just like, well, if I have two sought after, is it would it be possible 
to trade into. I'm not talking about some, you know, spike to Stern. Um, you, could get, you could get a 90s DMD. That's what I'm thinking. Like a, like a, sec, a second tier. Like you could get a Fishtails. It, like easily, for example, yeah. for getting rid of those two, I reckon. Yeah. Uh, like direct swap. Or you could sell sell and then buy with the money you get from it, I reckon. Right. Because um, ideally, and again, this is what I've learned about myself. I'm not a tinker. I just want to play these things. And yeah, so you if, don't want to restore them. I don't want to restore them. I don't have it in me. Um, I don't have the no, patience. You're not like me. I don't have the skill set. I don't have the tools. Um, yeah. And you need all those things to want yes. to actually do it. I'm... Yes. With my four, I don't think I'll be doing another one after timeline. Yeah. That's it for me. Um, but I would love to have a machine that is built solid that you don't have to worry about. You know, if, if somebody has done it correctly or maintain it correctly, that then you're not going to have an issue. That's why a lot of these new machines are so appealing to me because I'm like, ooh, the electronics on them. Like, if I could get one of these new Cactus Canyons... I would, because I know the electronics are going to be way better than the original Cactus Canyon. Um, any of the, you know, the, the, the what Chicago Queen has been doing would be mm. fantastic. Um, so, I don't know, it's, it's kind of like, that's why I'm feeling don't do anything other than cleaning up. The bare the minimum. Target, bare minimum on target alpha, so that somebody else could see it and see the potential of what yep. they would want to do to it. You want to go? Does it flip? Yes. Does it? But does it operate correctly? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If if you can get it doing that, then it's over to you, restorer, to go and yep. do what you need to do with the playfield, and and it seems like you could get a grand for it, um, without too much trouble. Yeah. Based on the condition of it, because it mm -hmm. it is a very good specimen for its age. So that would actually probably add another two fifty on it, just but for the fact where, that. And, but this is where I'm saying it's a difference between uh, selling it what you can get versus trading, because there's plenty of people that have more modern machines that they just go. It really doesn't do anything for me. But that is something that I've been I seeing. want. I want. And maybe it might be it might be trade with a bit cash away. You know what I mean? Right. Because that that effort, that happens fairly regularly too. It's like no, it's a trade, but obviously you know we'll fix you up with a bit of extra cash if yeah. you. You know, yeah. if the price isn't quite right. So, and anyway, pin, we'll... pinball people love that. They will do that all the time. So that means I have to start. I'll have to get into a whole nother arena because <laughs> I don't have any of these circles right now. Because um, uh, I'm long out of my pinball league. Uh, I don't have any contacts mm. from there. Actually, I never had you don't need contacts. In it, but. <laughs> I mean, obviously, you don't want to just put it up on like, Facebook Market or Craig. No, definitely not. <laughs> you don't, or Facebook Marketplace or whatever, because yeah. you're just going to get everyone and their dog coming in, yeah. lowballing you. No, it's more um, about so, venturing back into pin side waters or private private um, Facebook groups. We got a lot of those here in in Brisbane where there's like collectors who like. There's actually one called um, reasonably fairly priced pinball machines in Brisbane or something like that <laughs> because the only people who post there are not daylight robbers they oh, understand gotcha. the value they're not of the machine to, to flip quick sales no they they're looking to find the right buyer and yeah. they're willing to offer fair price and i've seen some tables coming across that you know are of the 80s era tables are going that's a a really good specimen of a table and b a really fair price for this and if I had that money and that space, I would probably buy that. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, so there's the, the prices are dropping a little bit, I think. Um, they're softening after the pandemic here. Um, so not, not a lot, but there, I've definitely noticed the prices are coming back to what I would expect to pay for some of these tables. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's good to see the market correcting. Of course, it also means I need to, well... I got to replace some of my drop targets on A Ball Deluxe. I'll just. In, in, you buy the entire batch as it is. So I'll just replace every single one of them when I uh, place my PBR order. And then. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, PBR will be able to sort you out and with then those. I need to source. I have two lamps that don't work. One of them, I think, is the bad socket. And the other one, 
it's got to be a bad connection. I don't know. And there's where the electronic side just go. Um, and look for charring on the connectors. It'll yeah. be, it'll probably be charring, or there'll be some um, oxidization on pins. It's also got another issue where the music track basically no longer plays, and mm, the soundboard uh, fault. And then it was doing a thing where once I knocked all the drop targets down, if I did one more shot on there, it just started doing an automatic score, just chick 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 chick, scoring. Um, so again, it's something with a contact, so. I'll clean the contacts and hope that that you know solves. Um, yeah. Before I call somebody to go, hey, can you come over here and service this? Get it working. Yep. Just um, just give it a once over. Get use all your new tools and equipment you're going to be buying from PBR to because yeah. it's all it's the same stuff. Yeah. Like yeah. it all just they're all just contacts, so they work the same. Uh, okay. Quick question. Mm hmm. Do you throw LEDs on this thing? Uh, yeah. Or yeah. Do you just do you throw LEDs on, or do I just buy nothing but forty sevens uh, bulbs? Because right now it's nothing but forty four bulbs, which are the hotter bulbs. Forty sevens are the cooler. Um, it the PBR sells them for two dollars and eighty cents a ten pack box. So Spy, I would buy warm LEDs. They sell so a kit warm on Marco. Supplies for I think mm -hmm. 120. Um, an LED kit. Mm -hmm. So you should be paying well, down here for a decent quality LEDs, like 44s, for, like 44 socket LEDs. Yeah. Um, about a buck a bulb. So you do yeah. the math. That's Australian dollars. Well, so, I've got about 80 bulbs. So uh, that price on Marco is purely for the convenience of the fact that they've assembled a kit for you. Right. You could pretty much go to any bulb, LED bulb reseller. We've got a couple here in Australia, but there will be some in, in the US as well. Or a bag of 100, and you'll be good. Hmm. Just warm ones, though, not yeah. white. Well, definitely warm, not cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've actually got... I've got cool... I think I've got cool in... A lot of mine and they're not terrible but i think warm it has the glow yeah. that you'll want with yeah. an em like early solid state i think you can get away with white um but ems definitely need that incandescent feeling because i them, cannot I put leds on eight bulb deluxe without doing a conversion correct because it has controlled lamps yeah. yes the thing with uh like most of the got leaves but definitely ems is there the, the lamps are literally driven by relays. Yeah. So you don't need to worry about there is no there is no problem with ghosting right. in yeah. an EM. So you can put whatever you want in there basically. Um, and it will work just fine. Next question. Do I replace all the rubber with super bands? You replace them with Titans, yes. Um, because an entire rubber kit is gonna run about seventy bucks. Yeah. So, but it makes, I mean, on the one hand, they don't wear as badly, right? Correct. And they don't perish. Okay. On the other hand, aren't they way bouncier? That, yeah, they are. But, um, that, like, I don't use gum rubber ones anymore because they, they degrade. And as long as you're rotating them mm. every two months or so and actually just change the position, they don't get any memory in them oh, okay. either so they're now i don't even look at gum rubber ones in fact i had the, the star race mm -hmm. that i had in what effectively in storage for you know four years until yeah. i bought it back um it had the original gum rubber on them and they were still they were all right but they would definitely pass they, they they definitely wouldn't have lasted for another year on there Whereas the the other ones that I've restored, I I say rotate the rubbers because I realize that they do get a little bit of like a, a notch in them if you don't rotate them. But if you rotate them, I, they're not showing any signs of wear. And these games have got, you know, thousand plus games on them each. And they're, they're just fine. Even the flipper rubbers are hardly worn. 
So they're really hard wearing. And the thing is, you get white ones. You don't get, don't worry about like getting colored rubbers for yeah. EMs and early solid states. They benefit from white. Yeah. Um, and they're, they, they look great. They stay cleaner because they don't get like micro cracks in them where the, the dirt gets in. Um, and they're hard wearing. So, yes, they will be a little bit bouncier, but honestly, that can kind of be in a bit of an advantage with an EM given the, the flippers are usually a little underpowered. Mm-hmm. Um, so you get that little bit of extra oomph from your flipper from them. And, um, yeah, they're... The definitely the, the the silicon bands are the way to go from my perspective because oh, they're it, it, you won't have to replace them again you won't have to lift the yeah. the play field protectors off and and put them new ones on so it's going to save you time and money all right there you go um mm-hmm. i think we well we, yeah we've we've reached maximum distance on this um <laughs> i'm gonna bring yeah, it real we, quick jared's gonna talk about it uh next time so it's not just stuff and things he's going to be talking about. He actually has something that we're going to talk about next time. There is a mod called the Prey Dog mod that apparently turns any Unreal Engine 4 or 5 game into a VR experience with a 3D. Yes. Um, that's, the, that's it in theory. Uh, Jared has had a crack at it and can't get it working. <laughs> no. It doesn't really need to be kept for next time. I'll tell you what it's like now because... It, it, like I got tipped off by a um, friend of the show, Bowling Man eighty eight, who is on our Discord, and he shared with me that this exists now and it's out of beta. Um, and so it it's the documentation's there. You can follow it and get it set up. Uh, his experience was that he got it working. He had to turn off ray tracing and HDR, uh, which is recommended in the thing, and it's working for him. He can play pinball effects in uh, VR. Um, but I can't. Right. I, I cannot. There's a number of rough edges in this at the moment, which is expected because it's open source implementation. Um, and I, yeah, I can't get it. It's got a really active Discord. I could, if I had the time and the patience, I could go onto the Discord and sort it out. But I don't have either of those things at the moment because life is busy. Um, so. At at the moment, this is the reason why in 2024 VR needs to come to to Zen Pinball officially because this is a way of doing it. But with anything that you have to roll your own on, it's like you know getting a visual pinball set up to a level that is satisfac- satisfying to play. A lot of effort needs to be invested by you, uh, the user, to do it. And I I just I don't want to have to like I have limited time to play video games at the moment, I don't want to have to spend 50% of that time t- tinkering to try and get it to work. I just don't have that time. So it's not for me at the moment. It, it People with the patience, it does let you do it, but it's just not for me at the moment. But the fact you can do it is amazing. And I, I did get the game started. I got Pinball Effects started and rolling. And it's it is proper VR. Like it's very it's not like you know 2d screen in a 3d room it is you are in there and it is rendering vr properly in the the game room and it looks really good so if you want to have a taste the wall in 2024 then try it out because it's going to whet your appetite and you're going to be like you won't be able to wait until it comes because it looks good already um but having it natively supported um, will be even better. All right. Well, there you go. Guess maybe, we won't, maybe, guess we won't maybe for next time. Well, we just did it then because that's about, that's pretty much all I have to say about it because I I haven't really had much success with it, unfortunately. Yeah. But I'm sure people will comment in the show notes yep. in in the premiere and tell me that I'm wrong and I'm okay to be wrong because I know I'm wrong. It, it's obviously going to be e- something easy to fix that I just don't have the cycles to actually invest yeah. in at the moment, but. Yeah. All right. So there you go, folks. Um, that uh, that does it for this episode, our first of the year, 2024. Many more to come. Lots more stuff coming around by the, the time we. Well, no, I don't think I will have that. Uh, I won't have the uh, at games unit next time we record. I don't think. Depends. We'll see. Anyway, that'll be exciting when that happens, though, because I'll make sure I do some unboxings and whatnot. Um, 
what we got in store for next time, not sure. But, uh, hey, surprises do happen. And until then, it's everything that Jared loves to talk about. Stuff and things. Until then, bye-bye. See you later.